Greetings everyone and welcome to Back to Ashes. My name is Phoenix. Today we're going to be trying something brand new. I know I love this genre as it makes me actually laugh more than anything. And then of course there are those that, you know, may upset you. But regardless of the case, before we jump into the stories, if you are new here and enjoy what you are hearing or you've been here and haven't done so already, please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. Not only does it help the channel out, but it also reminds you of every time I upload a video. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack, or tuck in to get warm, and prepare for this dose of vocal melatonin entitled True Self-Entitled Idiots. Right after this intro and ad will play, I'll read the first story and ad will play, and after that, there will be no more ads in this video. Disclaimer, you might get irritated or laugh your ass off. There's only one way to find out. Let's dive on in to this vocal melatonin. Seeing a post from another distributor reminded me of this one. We will call him Dave. Dave has a reputation. I was a merchandiser working in Indiana a few years back. I was fresh out of the army and fresh out of fucks to give. Our primary contract was to stock a big box store that also had a fairly large grocery department with their brand. I know that sounds confusing and a few smaller ingredient brands. We also did their resets. We did not wear uniforms, generally. I had a tote bag with me and a lanyard from my company. We knew the store inside and out because we were usually the only ones who redid them. I was considered too fast at my job by my coworkers and made them look bad. So I had no issue letting a customer know I was not an employee but that I did know, in fact, where items were and would help. It killed time, plus it helped somebody. One day, I was setting potato chips when I noticed store employees beginning to scatter. A predator was approaching. Dave was going to make sure some employee had an awful day. I had never encountered Dave before, but I realized the employees had. I heard him berate another distributor in another aisle. He was not satisfied. As he shouted for an employee, his quota for souls not met for the day. <laughs> Sorry about that. The poor distributor looked from the other aisle at me, counting himself lucky to survive as he put away his snack cakes. The frightened man had the audacity to tell Dave that I was an employee. I sat calmly on the floor, getting the potato chips set to just the right amount of product. When I heard a throat clear, I felt his shadow behind me. Dave was looking down at me. He was sure he had found a new soul to add to his collection. He literally kept in his cargo pocket. His head was shaved to hide his bald spot, and his eyes were filled with intense rage that only middle management, suburban living, and the PTO can produce. Where is... I was too focused on my work that I didn't quite pay attention. Little did he know the U.S. government had already taken my soul, remembering how nice the store employees had been to me. I was not going to rat on them, like that distributor had tried to. Sorry, I work for a distributor, but I know where it is. I sent Dave on an adventure, calculating just how long it would be until I was done, and how long his adventure would take before he realized he's been had. Dave went on his way. I finished with my potato chips and went back to unpack a pallet. I heard him yell outside in the stock room a few minutes later, but by then escaped his vision. I encountered a few others who were a bit nasty, but none who made employees hide, trying to take their soul. This happened a while ago, but I randomly remembered this story. So, as you might guess from the title, I'm a teacher. For one of our extracurricular activities, 
we had to go on location for a workshop. I was keeping a door open because we were supposed to enter through the side entrance, not the main one. To make sure none of the students started wandering around aimlessly, I made sure to be in view and yet out whenever I spotted a student walking near the meeting point. On the open space near the building we were meeting at, a stage was being placed for something. No posters, plaques, or any kind of explanation. Just a stage standing there. This didn't help in spotting students, but I managed. Someone that did work in the building had taken a picture of the stage and some people hanging around it and entered through the door I was keeping open. One of the guys in the picture did not want their picture taken, I can relate. But as I was standing there, keeping the door open, he thought I worked there too. As a result, he ordered me to go bring your colleague. Mind you, I couldn't move and not in the petrified kind of way. I was still waiting for some of the aforementioned students. I also had no idea how to open the door from the inside. There was no visible handle. So I couldn't just let the door open on its own, and I was not about to lock myself out. And, of course, students kept trinkling in as everything is going down. It came to a point that police, who were surveying the construction off and around the stage area, had to get involved, just so they could repeat what I'd been telling the yelling man this entire time. I don't work here. I have no idea who the price taker was and couldn't help it anyway. Finally, he believed me, or technically he believed them. So he started aiming his frustrations about the guy taking pictures at the police rather than at me. As I was waiting on one or two of my students, of course some had to be late, the guy that took the picture showed back up, saw and heard the guy's frustration about the picture, and started a whole new discussion, with me still stuck in the doorway. I'm pretty sure the picture got deleted, but by then, I was trying to disappear, and I wasn't actively paying attention to the whole discussion. I was just trying to manifest the missing students so I could leave and enjoy the workshop. After everything was said and done, and the people actually involved had all gone back to their businesses, the students finally showed up, they were of no help. Luckily, the workshop was active and interesting enough to clear my mind. But, as happened today, that memory pops up randomly. That guy was just a total douchebag. This happened today, and to be honest... I can't do anything but laugh at how ridiculous this went down. Just for context, I'm a server at a restaurant. You know, the pancake place, IHOP. I have been working at that place for over a year, gaining my co-workers and supervisors' friendship. Today, since it's the weekend, it was a pretty busy day, but not as busy as most weekends. Today, the day was as usual. I took my break. And when I came back to work, I took a couple tables on my station. One of the party I took was this lady, who we are going to call Karen. A woman about mid-thirties, who, to be fair, didn't look as a Karen. Piercings, black eyeshadow, black dyed hair, and really tight clothes. The lady was accompanied by a man, but he didn't participate as much. Here is the cast. Karen plays Karen, O.M. plays Old Man, S. plays a supervisor, M.T. plays a manager in training, C. plays co-workers, O.P. plays myself. I started my routine as usual, asking for what they wanted to drink, in this case, two sodas. After taking them the sodas, I started taking their order. Are you ready to order? O.M. Yes, may I have the combo with over easy and wheat toast? Well, of course. I turned toward the Karen. And what can I do for you? Karen, I'd like the order of two strawberry French toast that comes with sausage, eggs, and hash brown. 
Uh, no, but I can offer you instead the French toast combo, which comes with one slice of French toast, eggs, bacon or sausage, or ham, and hash browns. Karen, and that comes with white toast? No, but in that case, I can offer you the two slices of French toast you ask for, plus the classic combo, which comes with egg, bacon, sausage, or ham, hash browns, and more toast. Karen, I'll have the French toast and the same thing my dad ordered, but with scrambled eggs, sausage, and white toast. Okay, to confirm, he got the combo with over easy eggs, and you get the French toast, a combo with scrambled and sausage. Karen, no, he got the over easy egg. I got the scrambled ones. I'm confused, but assuming Karen didn't understand me when I said he and you. Uh, okay, anything else I can get for you? Karen, yes, is the fruit free? Visibly confused. Um, sorry, no. Karen growls. And what about the salad? Is that free? Um, neither that either. Karen, clearly irritated. Then that would be all, I suppose. Uh, okay, just to confirm. O.M. got the over easy egg combo while you got the two slices of French toast and scrambled eggs combo. Karen growls. O.M. That's correct. After that, I went to place their order on the system, since I wanted the food to come out as soon as possible to avoid this lady to get mad. I was planning to get their silverware after placing their order. After placing their order, something that didn't take me but maybe three minutes according to the clock, I went to go get their silverware, but on the way I crossed Karen angry. Karen, very derogatory and pushing her nails into my chest. You forgot our silverware. Just wanting to finish with this. I I'm so sorry. After that, Karen goes to her table, and I go to the kitchen to finish the order. When I enter the kitchen, I heard two of my co-workers talking. C1. OP's table is very rude. The lady cornered me when I was going to one of my tables, demanding me to get her silverware. I was lucky I even had some spare. C2. Ouch, I feel bad for OP. I wish him good luck. I saw them, and I know how rude they were to the hostess. As soon as the food got ready, I took it to Karen. I was missing one of the toasts, but the cooks were preparing it, so I toughed it out. No big deal. Once I took their food, the table next to them asked me for two cups of water, so I went to go get it. As soon as I entered the kitchen to get the waters... I got called by a co-worker. C3. OP, is Karen Table yours? OP, yeah, why? C3. They are asking for their silverware. I went to go check what happened. Is there anything wrong? Karen, irritated. Are you our waitress? I, I thought it would be a woman. Points to the scrambled eggs. Do these come from the French toast? Because I can't find it on the menu, and I don't want to pay for anything that is not free. Um, no, ma'am. You order two slices of French toast, and then you order the same order as your partner, but with scrambled eggs, sausage, and white toast. I'm coming back with the whole white toast for you. Karen. Oh, you don't know how to do your damn job, do you? I never ordered this. I thought it was free, and the French toast. O.M. quietly babbles. Yes, you did order that. No, I asked you multiple times and explained it to you, and you agreed. Karen, it is not my problem that you don't know how to listen. I won't be paying for this. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll take it away then. By that time, my supervisor and a couple of other co-workers already knew what was happening with Karen. I went to the kitchen, and a couple minutes later, M.T. called me. M.T. Karen is complaining a lot. Take most of the items off their check and... S. No! She has to pay. O.P. did nothing wrong. M.T. But we need to take the items off, or else she's going to call headquarters and... S. No! 
because if we keep giving free food out, more people will start acting rude and complaining so they can just waltz in here and get free food, turns to me. You can stop being attentive with that table and don't give them any discount or anything else. You would believe this is the end, right? The supervisor took care of Karen. She paid their bill and yelled, I am never coming back to this place, right? Uh, sadly, no. A while later, my supervisor came up to me with a $100 bill and the check. On our restaurant, servers take care of the cash with their tables, and at the end, they pay the total cash sales. I took them the change and was walking away without doing eye contact, but before leaving, I saw Karen snatching the ticket from O.M. and desperately counting the money. I entered the kitchen, and Karen starts screaming and enters the kitchen, pushing everyone from her path. Karen, what the fuck is this? C4, is your change in bill, ma'am? S. You are not getting anything free, turns to me. Go call the police. Karen throws the coins at us while screaming unrecognizable words. I started going to the front to call the police while Karen was still screaming words. I couldn't recognize anything, I'll assume, because English is not my mother tongue, and it costs me when people talk too fast. The screams were still very loud at the front of the restaurant, taking all the customers, servers, hostess, cleaning guys, and even the pictures on the walls attention. Then, Karen finally gets out of the kitchen, screaming. Karen, what are all of you just standing there watching? Call 911. I've been assaulted and sexually assaulted. Karen finally gets out of the restaurant and stays in front watching and calling someone at the phone. I went back to make sure my parties were all right and they tried to cheer me up saying, I do a great job. When I went back to the kitchen, my coworkers told me what had happened. Apparently Karen started threatening them that her boyfriend would come and kick our asses later that day. Spoiler, it never happened and she never stepped foot back in that restaurant. Here's a little background information. I'm a lanky person in my early 20s, but back in middle school, I took martial arts type classes and managed to reach black belt. Now my skills are rusty as hell, and I am out of shape, but if needed, I can fight. Now, I am currently in a struggling financial state, so when I do shop, I go for cheap, aka Walmart. Since it's getting cold and it's raining a lot, I have on a gray jacket, black pants, and some black sneakers. I needed some cereal, I like, and I am a dumbass who likes to wander, so I head up to the Grand Palace of Walmart for some free stuff. I'm browsing the games I can't afford, seeing what's new, what's on sale, what the prices are, if I wanted to save up, etc. I hear a cough behind me, the kind for getting people's attention. And I look up as I was kneeling and crouching to look at the bottom shelf and see this dude. For the story, we will just be naming him D for dumbass. Dear listeners, I'm only going to mention me and D one time so that I don't have to continue to say it. Me. Uh, oh, sorry. Am I in your way? Um, I'll move. D. No. I need you to unlock the games. I want to get something for my son's birthday. Uh, oh, well, I don't work here, so I don't have the keys to unlock this. Sorry. Of course you'd say that. You young people never work here whenever I need help. He did air quotes when he said that in a mocking tone. I stand up at this point. Maybe the reason people tell you that is because they don't actually work here. Nothing I am wearing is even blue, like the mandatory uniform. You're just hiding it under your jacket. Don't lie to me. I know those are the pants they wear here. Uh, black jeans? 
Sorry, I'm an edgy bitch and prefer dark colors. Excuses. Now help me. I'm a paying customer, and the customer is always right. Having worked customer service type jobs, mainly fast food, this irks me. But I at least have a response. Sure. Thing is, all these companies are privately owned, and they can decide who is and isn't a customer. Plus, I am too, and my always right words are to leave me alone. I just want to shop in peace. How dare you? You millennials are so damn rude. At this, I laugh. Since the youngest millennial is, according to Google, 27. <laughs> All right, dude, is this some kind of prank? I'm Gen Z. I'm tired. I do not have enough time for this. So, leave me be, okay? With that, I walk away, but he starts to yell at me and grabs the hood of my jacket. Don't you walk away from me, bitch. I will have you know I can get you fired. I smack at his hand to prevent me from being pulled off balance. Oh, buddy, I would quit fast enough to make your head spin, threatening to get me fired at a place I never have worked for. Now, back off of me. You hit me. How dare you? Where's your manager? At this point, an actual employee walks up. Since it's getting loud, and before he can even ask what's going on, D goes off. This employee hit me and wouldn't help me. You need to make sure they get fired. The employee. Okay, that sounds serious. Where is the employee who hit you? Uh, right here. And he points at me. The employee looks confused, and I decide this shouldn't escalate more. All right, my turn to talk. Hi, I am browsing. He thinks I work here. I told him I don't. He grabbed my hood as I was walking away because he's annoying me. And I smacked his hand away because he grabbed my clothes. Plus, he's a good head taller than me. Why would I hit someone bigger than me if they didn't pick the fight? You liar! You refuse to help me! He then points to the actual employee. And if you lie and say they don't work here, I know you are just covering for them. I want the manager. The employee looks a bit scared. I don't know his age, but he looked a little younger than me, so this might have been his first job. Just get the manager, and just in case, I would suggest security since this guy is... I was then cut off by D. You think I'm crazy, huh? You're probably going to lie to get me thrown out. Well, I won't go down unless I take you with me. And with that, he lunges at me. He pushes me to the ground and starts wailing on me. I put my arms up to block my face. And Jesus, this dude packs a punch. If I was unlucky, he probably could have seriously hurt me. The employee runs off, and the sound causes D to stop to try and yell at him. Since I know what I am doing, I take the time he paused to bring my elbow up into his gut. He doubled over, and I punched his nose. I honestly wish I broke it, but no luck. And I slip from under him and crawl back before I try and stand. I'll make sure you regret what you did to me. Back off, you crazy fucker. You are much bigger than me and I will use any dirty tactic to stop you from hurting me. You got it? He just screams and charges me, trying to football tackle me. I try to dodge, but because this is in the middle of an aisle, he grabs me. He pushes me to the walls of the TVs and slams me into it. And I don't know what his plan was because I don't want to get hurt and pay medical bills. So I try slamming my elbows down on him. Doesn't work. So I then go to plan B and try to hit him in his groin. I missed. But I hit close enough to make him go off guard. And this is when security shows up yelling. I don't remember all the words yelled, but as the security guard is trying to pull this guy off of me, he pushes them back and slams me into the wall. This time, some of the TVs they have on display came crashing down, hitting me and this guy. The now broken TVs off him, I go for a groin punch. This time, I don't miss, 
And since this jewel got slammed with my full force, probably enough punching power to dent drywall, if I'm honest, I'm just out of shape. I just dip. Security now has the upper hand and finally pushes this guy to the ground. The end of the story is how you would expect. Crazy dude gets arrested. Paramedics are called for me. Since I'm American, I do not want them called because of bills. But good news. The worst injuries I had were some nasty-ass bruises and a few cuts and gashes from when we slammed the TV wall and the TVs fell. Nothing a bandage or band-aid couldn't fix. And since the only thing I was going to buy was a box of cereal, the manager, who was told about what had happened, gave me a 50% off discount, so I felt better. I don't really get why these people get so angry. They go to violence automatically. Walmart is pressing charges, but I want nothing to do with it. So I won't have an update on the court's result. Can I just add one thing? <laughs> Why is it always Walmart? Why? Why is it never like a grocery store outside in the parking lot? <laughs> okay, back to the stories. I'm fuming right now, so I gotta rant this one out. So, we've had issues with our attached neighbors from the moment we bought our house. Originally, it was just 60-something-year-old female and her 18-something male grandson. The day we moved in, we tried to make small talk and introduced ourselves. The woman was dropping hints that the old owners used to bake her goodies all the time, and she missed it, kind of insinuating that we should be just like them because she deserved to be treated like a princess. The grandson introduced himself as the worst person in town. What an intro. So afterwards, we just tried to keep a friendly distance and stay out of their way. Suddenly, after about a week of living there, they began screaming at odd hours, blasting music, banging on the walls. The police were at their house for domestic disputes, monthly, due to the woman calling the cops on her grandson. We've lived here for over two years now, fixing up our house and making it beautiful and adding value to it. Up until this point, we just let them have their problems because it's not like we have kids to worry about protecting. It's just my partner and I in our mid-twenties. Fast forward to last month. One evening after it got dark, we heard what we thought were gunshots right in our backyard. Mind you, we live in a downtown suburb, borough, with an elderly person facility right behind our house. So we were a little concerned. We had cameras that we installed just to be safe, so we checked them. The grandson and his friends were sitting in their yard talking about, shoot another round. They'll just think it's fireworks, and that's a 45 round. Unfortunately, it was dark, and we couldn't see them shoot it, but the camera picked up the sound of them shooting off nine rounds, so we naturally called the cops. The kids then left, and the cops couldn't prove any more was on the premises with a gun, so they let it go. In the beginning of August, the woman decided to let her daughter, sister-in-law, and their children move in with them for who knows what reason. Before this, they had only come to visit on holidays. And one time, they left their infant child on the street in a carrier for over half an hour until I knocked and let them know she was out there. None of my business, but from there on, the screaming and yelling got worse, and this time with crying kids in the mix. I had half a mind to call CPS, but I've heard the awful things that happened to the kids in the system, so I couldn't bring myself to do that either. This month, we were fortunate enough to go on a road trip to see some cool places and visit family. We left at the end of August, and we were checking our cameras when we had service, which was not much. One day, we get a call from our unattached neighbor saying our attached neighbors were building a really ugly shed with spare planks from who knows where. 
We try not to worry too much because up to this point, their crappy shed wasn't our problem, other than an eyesore in the neighborhood. We just enjoyed the rest of our trip and let it go, occasionally checking to make sure they weren't in our yard or anything else. It's nicely fenced in and gated. Didn't catch anything on camera other than them building their crappy shed. We arrived home a few hours ago to find that these entitled fuckers dug out and stole part of our fence, metal post and chain link, to create a back fence and gate for their yard. This left huge holes in our back parking lot that my partner almost tripped and fell into. They also tied into our fence, incorrectly pulling our fence lopsided and loose, basically damaging it. Unfortunately, our camera didn't catch them taking our fence, just was in our yard in one frame and in theirs the next. We wanted to press charges, but aren't sure how to go about it. We checked our seller's disclosure, stating that the previous owners of our house had put the fence in, so we know it was our fence they took. I am so livid, and I know yelling at them won't fix it, but how can you be so freaking entitled that you can't even buy your own chain-link fence, but instead steal from your neighbors when they aren't home? Thank you for listening to my rant. So to start, I am a short female who works overnights at a gas station alone three to five nights out of the week. I wear a mask because, to be blunt, people freaking stink. People stink of all kinds of things, and I'm oversensitive to scents. I've had homeless people come in and clearly haven't bathed, or some older people who smell like a brewery buying more cases of booze. I don't judge, though. They can buy their booze and lotto all they'd like. They come in with at least a decent attitude and I'll return it. But thankfully, I have an awesome manager who knows I can and will throw a bad attitude back in the customer's face when it calls for it. This night just so happened to be one such night. This was a couple weeks back at this point, and I'll admit I'm still ticked at the lady for doing this. It was about 2 a.m. when the skinny short lady comes in. I notice she has hospital bands on. Not uncommon as there's one a few blocks away, so this station is likely on her way home. I have a pang of sympathy for her. She's likely exhausted and probably emotionally drained. So I'm expecting to hear her vent and let it go in one ear and out the other, as I've always done a few dozen times at this point. Well, no. She notices my mask and begins asking me about it rather accusingly. Why are you wearing a mask? You know those things don't work, right? I immediately decided to just stonewall her and dropping the customer service voice, I sternly said. <laughs> Why I wear a mask? It isn't of your concern. And go about the transaction, ignoring her remarks and a few insults. As I'm grabbing her cigarettes, I hear her cough. Now again, she has hospital bands on, so I don't think anything of it at first. Clearly, she's at least semi-sensible and is coughing away from me, right? No. She continues to cough, and as I glance over while I'm bagging her items, she is coughing on the card reader and the displays on the counter. She leans to the lotto scanner and coughs more. I'm getting pissed at this point, but I remain silent. It's not until she's leaning over the counter, nearly into my face to cough on the register, and me, that a switch flips. I grab the bottle of disinfectant and start spraying. I spray the counter, the card reader, her purse, the outside of the bag, with her items and even her shirt. I was aware enough to know not to risk spraying her face, but she was still coughing on everything. She moved to the newspaper rack, the drink cooler, even the door, looking like a toddler marking territory. 
She ended it by grabbing a basket display of snacks and chocolate and flinging it across the floor, saying, Have fun cleaning that up, bitch. Just wait until I tell your manager. I'm her friend, you know. Now, to admit, I had been screaming at this woman to get the hell out of my store the entire time. I was spraying things at her. I was shaking, mad, and I yelled back, Do it. Tell her. I'll be telling her myself after this. Which I did, actually. I texted my manager immediately after she left. I cleaned up the display and wiped down everything she coughed onto, carefully as I could. I had to take an anti-anxiety to kill the panic attack I had as soon as my anger subsided. Jumping forward to the morning when my manager arrived, I was expecting her to at least be upset as I told her everything I've said above. I was certain I'd at least be written up. Instead, this woman hands me a coffee from Starbucks and goes, she's lucky I wasn't here, and left it at that. I saw her days after and got the chance to point her out to other staff. So now everyone knows that she made a bio-attack, as we dubbed it on the store. I don't know if she's been back after that, though, since she hasn't come back inside after that incident. A recent event triggered this old memory. It's more of a she-doesn't-work-here type of ordeal. This happened many years ago, I think a year or two after the 2008 recession started. Setting is a retail drugstore chain, one open 24 hours a day. Despite being a big business, we're still feeling the effects of the recession. Everyone still has a job, but hours are being cut. I'm a shift supervisor working the closing 2 to 11 p.m. shift. The overnight supervisor and cashier have arrived. I'm in the office talking to the overnight supervisor. When I get a call for a manager, needed up front. I leave the office to handle the situation. For context, I'm female, and so is the overnight supervisor. Both cashiers are male. Once I get up front, both cashiers are ringing customers up and tell me the complaining customer left. I notice there's a line and decide to help. As I'm ringing up a customer, let's just call her Jane, a middle-aged man, let's call him John, walks in and angrily tells me he needs to speak to me now. I tell him, no problem, let me finish with my customer. John starts anyway. Your employee said she's going to call the police on me for having a disability placard, but I don't look disabled. John has an accent. On the surface, John doesn't look disabled. Um, which one? As I point to my two cashiers. A woman. She said it's her job to manage disabled parking. Jane begins to giggle at this point. Whoever she was, she doesn't work for us. She said she works for you. Sir, there are only two females on duty at this moment, one of them being myself, the other I was talking to in the office when you asked for a manager. If you'd like, I can call her out to the front, and you can see if it was her. Now, the shopping center does have security guards. However, last I checked, they were all male. I want to file a complaint about her and get her fired. Jane decides to chime in. Sir, we're in the middle of a recession. People are losing jobs and getting their hours cut. You really think this store has a lot of money laying around for that meaningless position? The gears in John's head finally start to turn. She doesn't work for you? No, she doesn't. Can I kick her ass? I have no say in that. I'm going to kick her ass then. Okay, enjoy, as I wave goodbye. I finish ringing up Jane, who's still trying to hold back giggles. For a moment, I thought, wow, you guys must be making a buttload of money to hire someone for that small job. About 15 minutes later, I clocked out and head to my car. John's driving his car, and he rolls his window down. She's still driving around here. I'm gonna kick her ass. I wave by, 
Don't know if John ever got the chance to kick her ass that night or not. So, I was grocery shopping this morning. We were out of food at home. Well, I got my stuff that I came for and was in line. Everything was fine until Karen showed up behind me. She saw my cart was full of groceries and she proceeded to give me a nasty look. So, I knew it wasn't going to take me a bit to unload my cart onto the lane. Anywho, I was in the process of checking out and pulled my food stamp card out. I was mid-swipe when Karen had the audacity to say, You should be ashamed of yourself for using food stamps. My money goes towards people like you who leech off the government. You are all a bunch of lazy people. If you weren't lazy, maybe you wouldn't need assistance. I gave her a weird look and turned back around and said, you know, you should be ashamed of yourself for even suggesting that. You don't know my life. As far as reading the room, you failed in that area. How I live my life is none of your fucking business. She proceeded to say a lot of other stuff, and I just left. On my way out, I hear the cashier say her card was declined, and she needed another form of payment. I smiled and didn't feel bad at all. I was in the middle of loading my car when the Karen yet again approached me this time. She was loading groceries into her car. It should be noted here, she was on the phone yelling into it, saying something like, The man who used food stamps should be ashamed, and my car declined because it was his fault. I looked at her like, no, it was not my fault. She saw me. I saw her. I ignored her. She then looked at my car, it's a 2007 Honda CRV, and said, You don't have money for groceries, but you buy a nice car? That doesn't make any sense. I looked at her car, which was a nice Cadillac, and said, Well, I take good care of my car. That's why it looks nice. Also, I continued from where I left off in the store by basically saying, You had no right to say the things you did towards me, just because... You didn't like my cart was full, and I was using food stamps to pay. So take your rude-ass assumptions and shove them somewhere else. Good day, bitch. I slammed my door and left. I didn't feel bad about it at all. Okay, to set the picture... I recently sold a used notebook on eBay Classifieds, similar to Craigslist. It was a pretty old Acer notebook I used during uni and had eight years on its back. It's still perfectly fine to consume media on or just use it for personal work. I even replaced the battery so it could actually hold a charge for more than 30 minutes and replaced the HDD with an SSD so it boots fast enough to be usable. The ad was very clear in the fact that it is used and does not come with a Windows key, since I always use Linux on it. So I installed a fresh copy of Linux Mint on it, and also noted that fact in the ad. I got a few messages with people wanting it for less than the new battery was worth, so I was delighted to get a message from a lady that needed a notebook for browsing and maybe doing some spreadsheets or text work. I told her that I could install LibreOffice for, which is fine for most users, and then send it over to her as soon as I received payment. She paid, and I sent. After two weeks, she messaged me that it doesn't turn on and wanted a full refund. I told her to send it back, and I would refund her the money. After receiving it, it would turn on easily and would give me a Windows 7 login screen with her account. I texted her that it works and has been used by her, so I will send it back again for reimbursement for the shipping. She demanded I delete her data and refund me. So I circumvented the lock screen and took a look at her stuff. She had vacation pictures on there 
She took the thing on to a vacation, used it, and then just sent it back. After confronting her with all of this, she blocked me without getting the money back and tried to claim the money back instead with her bank. But since I could show all of the receipts for shipping and successful delivery when my bank contacted me, they denied the claim and I haven't heard from her since. So I have 80 pounds and a working laptop to sell. Guess what? Screw you, Karen. I obviously deleted all of her data by cleaning the drive with an eraser tool after all this was over. I may be a bitch, but I am not a criminal. So I'm a 24 year old female and am in the process of finding out if I tore my left ACL or not. During this time, I was given a temporary handicap pass because I'm on crutches and have a knee brace. This morning, I drove to my MRI appointment and saw an empty handicap spot and parked there. I shouldn't be walking regularly, but I can at least limp around the car and grab the crutches in the passenger seat. Right before I open the door, some lady approaches me from behind and is all, Miss. Hey, miss, you can't park there. I am not a mean person, and I like to give people the benefit of the doubt, so I just say, uh, I'm on crutches and I have a pass. Don't worry. This lady, with her voice sharpening, says, You can clearly walk, and I don't see no crutches. So I open the door and pull one out. For some context, my crutches are decorated with stickers. The lady, who will now be known as Karen, scoffed and said, Shh, that pretty shit ain't real. That's just a decoration. Move your damn car. She pulls out her phone, and I assume she's going to start filming me. I'm not confrontational by any means, but my knee was hurting. I woke up too early, and Karen was probably about to blast me on Facebook. So I responded, if you film me or don't get out of the way, that film in this crutch will be up your ass. I'm not sure what happened next, as I turned around and hobbled off. I was so upset I forgot my other crutch in the car. So a bit of background. I work at a call center doing customer service for the e-commerce arm of a large chain of warehouse stores. Among many, many, many other things, we sell appliances. We also have very frequent sales. Lately, I presume because marketing has a vested interest in ruining customer services these days. We've been doing a lot of sales that hinge on the customer spending a certain amount of qualifying items in one purchase, or buying a certain quantity of qualifying items. Naturally, most calls pertaining to these sales are along the lines of, if I had known this promo was going on, I would have bought these in the same order. Can you do anything? Or, I bought these items and the next day that sale started. Can you do anything? These calls are not what this post is about. We have a pretty forgiving price adjustment policy in place for handling them. And it's no wonder that they're common. After all, these are great deals. But for some reason, they're just not good enough. Picture this. It's 7.30ish, near the end of my shift, but not near enough for me to get excited yet. A call comes in. I give my thank you for calling spiel and ask the customer, how can I help you today? She says she's thinking of buying a few things, but has some questions. She gives me the item number she wants and their appliances, so I'm mentally queuing up my answers about installation. It's included, and we provide the kids. The return policy. It's 90 days, but we have a warranty department that covers the unit for two years. And extended warranties. We offer those as well. Then she mentions the items she's buying qualify for both the spend 2000 get $300 off promo and the buy 2 get $100 off promo. 
and starts talking about how much each item costs. So the fridge is over $2,000 and the washer and dryer is $1,600. So it's almost $2,000. I'm not sure where she's going with this, but I'm still assuming it's a normal destination. Then she takes a left so hard it practically snaps my fucking neck. So can I get $300 per item instead of $300 off total? Or can I just buy these on separate orders and get the $300 for each item? She was getting an extra $100 on this order already because she was buying two appliances. Also, her reasoning was because her total was almost four grand, which is not how spend get promos work. I've already located her in our records, just in case she had some recent delivery issue or something that she was expecting compensation for. Customers are usually aggressively forthcoming with this information, but it never hurts to check. The last call was in December of last year and appears to have been resolved per the call notes. I tried to tell her as gingerly as possible. That's not really how that promotion works, ma'am. You can absolutely place them as two orders, but they both need to be $2,000 or more. Okay, can I buy something that's $400 with the washer and dryer to get the promo and then return it? You can, but you'd lose part of the credit since it's applied to the whole order and not a specific item, ma'am. The system splits the amount between the items on the order. It'd be a relatively small portion, but you wouldn't get the full credit. Then can you just give me another $100 off the full order? I naively think she hasn't noticed the discount amount on her order total or something. It's more common than you think. Oh, you're already getting an extra $100. These items also qualify for the Buy More, Save More promo. So you'd actually get $400 off if you ordered them both. No, I want an extra $100 off. Scenario one, I place two orders, one with the fridge and then one with the washer and dryer plus a vacuum or something. Quick note here, a vacuum did not qualify for the promo. And then I return the vacuum and get most of the credit back. Or scenario two, you just give me an extra $100 off and we skip that whole dance. Scenario three, I am not beholden to your false ultimatums and will not give you an extra discount on your already discounted order that you have not even placed yet, just because you think you should get it. I make a show of asking my team. I drop a message in the group chat saying, I am at an absolute loss, man. I have no idea how to tell this customer that we cannot give her an extra $100 off her order that qualifies for both our ongoing promos. Therefore, my supervisor gives me the requisite. I asked my mom and she said no card to play. Uh, I apologize, ma'am, but I just spoke to my team and we are not able to discount this order any further. Okay, I'll see if I can get this at competing business. Then, they price match plus 10% you know. I resist the urge to tell her that they can afford to do that because they charge extra for installation. She asks me if I can get her an earlier delivery date on an item she has not ordered yet. I tell her that we're not able to formally expedite appliance deliveries, but that the item ships directly from a distribution center, and depending on when it reaches the delivery facility, we might be able to get it to her earlier than the site estimates anyway. She hangs up on me, and I tell my supervisor that she threatened to go to a competitor store and got a she-can-do-that LOL in response. I wonder how often this strategy works for her. Anyway... The moral of the story is don't work in customer service, and by all means, don't fuck with the employees. And that, dear listeners, brings a close to these true self-entitled idiot stories. I'd like to take a moment and give a very special shout-out 
to the reformed members of Back to Ashes. Tammy Slayton, Mrs. Innerscare, Tina Mee, Colt Stone Wolf, Les Crispin, CAG, Denise Sass, Samantha Play, Stephanie McLaren, Corpse Lover, Normie DW, Christy Elias, Cindy Cleveland, and Patty's Knees. Thank you all so much for your continued support. I appreciate each and every last one of you. If you are sleeping, I hope Slumberland is treating you comfortably. If you are awake, I hope you've enjoyed this collection. Until next time, please take care of yourselves. I'll be reading to you soon. Have yourself a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Peace, love, and light to you all.